Well, as you know, in the last video, we took a look at the main numeric operators and we told you that we'd have more to say about those. And this is that video. This is going to be simple and straightforward, but we wanted to break it out from the numeric operators themselves so that you have everything in small digestible chunks and everything is so easy to understand that way. So one of the things that we need to think about is the operators, many of them that we saw are actually what are called binary operators. That's right. For instance, look at our subtraction here. The subtraction symbol takes what's on the left and subtracts from it what is on the right. It works with those two components and that's why we call it a binary operator. Yeah, so when we do the dash in this fashion, it is interpreted as a binary operator that does subtraction. It's the same with our addition. Yeah, this plus symbol is going to work on the value to the left and the value to the right. It is functioning as a binary operator in Python. Now, these same symbols can function in a unary, oper uh, unary operator role. Yeah, so if I take the negative sign and I run it up next to the number 1.5, uh, 1 then what am I doing? I'm creating a negative number. Yeah, in this case, a negative float. So notice when this same symbol is used in a different way inside of Python, it takes on a unary operator function and it only operates with that value that is directly to the right of the symbol. Plus would be the same way. Yeah, and this is assumed. So sure enough, when we tell Python, hey, print positive 1.5, it says, well, that's 1.5, thank you very much. There's a couple of times, couple of kind of corner case times in Python where you would use the unary plus symbol to do some various things. So isn't that interesting? That same operator can have different functions based on how it is used inside of Python. And that's the specific language that we refer to with these operators acting in that way. Now, the other thing I wanted to remind you of is these operators have priorities. I told you in the previous video when we went through the numeric operators that we were doing them in order of priority, from least priority up to the highest priority. And that impacts our readability with our code, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, we want to know that multiplication takes priority over addition here so that when we look at this, we say, okay, that's going to be three times five is 15 plus two is 17. Now, one of the things I'll remind you of at the end of this video is you can always use parentheses within parentheses to change the priority however you want or even just to increase readability. Yeah, a lot of times I'll find myself using parentheses within parentheses, even within parentheses, just to improve readability, even though I'm not changing any of the priority anyways. So, yeah, we have to keep in mind the priorities of these operators. Something else is how they bind, operator bindings. What is this a reference to? Well, what if you have multiple of the same operators. Now, what is the priority going to be? How does it bind? And this one, the remainder operator, it operates from left to right. And that is typically, typically what you're going to get. Yeah, bindings will be left to right. So we do the six into nine, which leaves three as the remainder. And then we do the two into three, which leaves one as the remainder. And that's what we get, the value of one, because we do the operation from left to right due to the left to right binding.
Now, you knew that I had to give you an exception, right? Sure. There is a time when the numeric bindings that you know about are going to operate in reverse, and that's when we do exponents. Yeah. So this would be 2 raised to the third. Notice we're starting from the right. 2 raised to the third, which gives us 8, and then 2 raised to the 8, which gives us 256. So this is that rare exception where we're doing the binding from right to left. Now, as I promised you before I leave you in this video, I wanted to just remind you parentheses can really, really help you out in that whole priority game, but more than that, readability. Yeah, so use those parentheses for sure if it's going to improve the readability of your code. And obviously, you must use the parentheses if you want to override the default priorities of your operators, of course. Well, thanks so much for joining me. We've got lots more to say about operators and lots more different types of operators to share with you as we travel through this journey of entry-level Python certification together. Oh, and of course, let me show the correct answer here. This would print the value of 160 to the screen, and that's because we have that remainder portion being done first, the innermost parentheses. That gives us a remainder of 12, I believe, yes. And then 5 times 12 is 60. 60 plus 100 is our 160.